So are different kinds of monsters like different races, or are they like completely different species? You've got different numbering of eyes, some with wings, I just want to know what the rules are here. Frightened Elementary is one of presumably many shameless scare puns that we will see throughout the film. And no fire breathing! But all of the other strange powers that these monster children probably have, i.e. laser vision, spitting acid mucus, and this guy, who seems like his mere existence is a hazard, are totally okay. Who are we missing? Quirky protagonist got left behind creating a significant reveal cliche. I wish I had pockets. Does he mean pocket like a kangaroo? Because no one here is wearing any clothes. We're cousins! Again, not sure of the genetics going on here. Is fur a dominant or recessive trait? We're entering a very dangerous area. Which is apparently okay to bring a school group of children to. This is where we collect the scream energy to power our whole world. Between this movie and the other monsters movie, there's never been a clear explanation as to how it's collected. Are they just collecting sound? Why does human scream produce this energy and not monster scream? This all seems very complicated when they could just capture a bunch of human children and make them scream for a while into a large machine. Oh, wait, that's the plot of the other movie. Carry on. The Right Stuff Style Heroes Walk cliche, which also appeared in Monsters, Inc. If you rip off your own ripoff, does that make it new? I learned everything I know from my school, Monsters University. Roll credits. It's the best scaring school there is. You wish. Fear tech's the best. These colleges are all so vaguely named. Are they diploma mills? I guess it kind of sucks that he can't see what's going on, but all he's missing is a monster walking through a door, something he probably sees every day. What happened to the buddy system? Maybe the teacher should let the pairs take turns seeing what happens, instead of letting them crowd around a dangerous entryway. It's Mike going over the line. Mike knows not to go over the line because they said it like four times in the last three minutes, so if he's clearly going to break the rules, why would he not try to sort of hide? Also, this teacher is a really incompetent buddy. I thought I heard something. That dad didn't look around for two more seconds and say, I don't remember buying our son a blue alligator skin jacket. So after the monster collects the scream, he just casually walks out of the room through the closet? And no kid in the history of scream collecting has found this to be weird? There are trading cards for the best scarers, who are essentially factory workers. This monster society is pretty big on communist propaganda. Also, since the scaring isn't televised, how are these guys big stars with trading cards and shit? Everything looks just like it does in our world, but has little spikes on it. Cause, you know, monsters. I'm welling up with tears. The bus driver is able to pronounce her S sounds really well, given her jaw and teeth situation. What are the suitcases carrying? It's well established that no one in this world wears clothes, except for an occasional shirt, hat, or jacket. Which brings up this question. Is everyone just walking around completely naked? And if so, do they not have genitals? If they did, this would be a very different movie. Universities of our world would kill for this kind of diversity. Imagine the pamphlets! Who is that monster throwing that giant frisbee to? Was it the one other 50-foot monster in the school? If so, I'm glad they like each other. They would be very difficult to avoid. Also, how many items are scaled up for the giant monsters? She certainly can't attend any classes in buildings or sit in chairs. Also, I know this is a universe filled with monsters, but this is the only giant we've seen between both of the films Pixar's made about the monster world. I would think that the 50-foot monster would be viewed as a freak and would have a very difficult life because they couldn't fit anywhere. This is the real story here. It looks like they're just making normal doors. How do they know what the doors are supposed to look like to match up with the closet door in the human world? Is it the door that's special, or the apparatus that holds the door? There's a lot missing here. If they eat the trash, then why do they have trash cans? It would probably be more efficient to just take what you weren't going to eat back up to the buffet counter and avoid the trash can altogether. It seems like your physical appearance is indicative of what social club you should join, which is something that their universe and our universe have in common. That's racist. The things humans have that allow them to comfortably wear glasses do not apply to Randy, and many other monsters that we will see later. Yet his glasses are staying up, no trouble. Yeah, but lose the glasses. They give it away. And that's how Randy got his devious squint, by foregoing vision correction. How many college-age kids still have retainers that they need to wear all the time? I guess this is an effort to make him look younger and dorkier. But I've seen several other monsters that have a greater need for an orthodontist, like this guy. They made Monsters University way too much like regular human college, and not the backdrop of A Nightmare Before Christmas. Fail that exam, and you are out of the scaring program. I'm not sure why the monsters seem shocked at this. This is a society that's huge on bureaucracy, and this is a venerated program in a famous institution. This pass-fail requirement should be common knowledge among students. Dean Hartscramble is one of the few monsters that gets to wear clothes. Sullivan. Like Bill Sullivan? The scarer? Yeah! He's my dad. Sullivan is a very common name. This was a roll of the dice. This is like a student waltzing in named Jones, and the professor says, like, Tommy Lee Jones, the actor? And that being right. I'm sorry, sh should I keep going? No, no, Mr. Sullivan's coming in. All Sully did was roar. He didn't answer the professor's question. My theory is that the professor has a monster equivalent of a hard-on for Sully. <laughs> this monster, explicitly called a pig, isn't much bigger than Mike, and appears to not be anthropomorphic. So they could theoretically, like, eat it? What are the rules? Sully and Mike's first encounter, and subsequent rivalry, occur because somehow a pig Sully stole from Fear Tech managed to climb into Mike's dorm room, which is at an impossible height for pigs or Sully. 
Is this pig also half spider? Or can pigs just run up walls in this universe? It is convenient that the pig spider took Mike to the place they were just discussing minutes earlier where he didn't want to go. Just in case you didn't get that Randy was lame, the animators of this film used his cupcakes against him by writing lame across his face. For the record, I would probably hang out with the guy at the party who had the cupcakes. I love cupcakes. Mike makes a quick decision to make an impossible shot that would in no way work in a real world situation. You might be saying to yourself, well, this is a college filled with monsters. This isn't the real world. But the physical properties of things are the same there as they are here. So the sin still stands, thus ending an argument I just had with myself. Now that the pig spider is caught in the trash can, he is making no further efforts to get away, even though he easily could. That guy just happens to have a Monster to Use sticker with him. I'm glad he found a place for it. Also, is the logo for the school the same as the logo for the Monsters, Inc. energy company? There is no indication that the energy company owns the school. Also, we met a graduate from Fear Tech working on the scare floor at Monsters, Inc. We either have some vertical integration going on here or some serious copyright infringement. This guy's on Sullivan? Like the famous Sullivan? This round, one-eyed guy is the only character we've met so far that has a voice that matches the shape of his mouth. Even Johnny here shouldn't be able to speak so smooth with that underbite. Slow down, squirt! I really don't think that this guy can call Mike Squirt. They are the same size. Is this their version of beer pong? Get the gooeyest guy wasted so that we can play tic-tac-toe on his chest with our ping-pong balls? That seems a lot more complicated and difficult than the way we do it. Apparently, the only way to get on the Monsters U or Fear Tech football team is to be purple or orange, respectively. Now that's racist. Where did this guy come from? I feel like I would have noticed him at the line of scrimmage. Also, having a giant blob on your football team that is impossible to take down is colossally unfair. This story just glazes over how Mike loses his job after injuring several students. Dominant Silverback Gorilla. How do they know what Silverback Gorillas are? Do they have silverback gorillas in the monster world? One frightening face does not a scare him make. Isn't this entire course in scaring basically just an acting class? If that was so important, why was it not bolted down? Or better yet, why was it even there at all? There are college freshmen in there every day, goofing around near very insecure artifacts. This is more Dean Hart Scrabble's fault than Mike and Sully's. So a roar wouldn't make him scream, it would make him cry. Alerting his parents, exposing the monster world, destroying life as we know it. Has the monster world, which is full of modern day technology, always had this ability to jump into the human world for power? Or was there a monster version of prehistoric times? A monster industrial revolution? Less scaring classes and more history classes, please. Also, how does a kid crying endanger their operation over a kid screaming? This seems like the monster could easily run away before the parents got there. Well, less crying makes parents instantly appear like genies afterwards. What you lack is something that cannot be taught. You're not scary. Granted, she's just saying what someone should have said to Mike long ago. But her inspiration seems to be just because they broke her scare canister. The inspiration is further supported by the fact that she had to have let him into the school in the first place. She's the dean. This is a flagship competition for this school. Yet they couldn't splurge on a better banner? I bet Foghorn Leghorn just forgot to get one and improvised. But if you lose, you will leave Monsters University. I know Dean Hartscramble is a total hard-ass, but Monster Society is extremely civilized. Seems like this wager would run afoul of bylaws and ethics committees. 30 years in the textile industry and then old Dandy Don got downsized. Figured I could throw myself a pity party or go back to school and learn the computers. This is too real. Painfully real. Is too real a sin for a cartoon monster movie? Shouldn't a monster universe have a human creature on their Lisa Frank style notebooks? A unicorn griffin thing probably lives out there somewhere. 14? So basically, you guys have no scaring experience? <laughs> Not sure why Sully asks this question with a cadence of surprise. Based on the look of these guys, he should have known that they have no scaring experience. You're about the scariest fella I've ever seen, even with them pink polka dots. Oh. I'm afraid Don is colorblind. Those are purple polka dots. Is that an anarchy symbol in the middle of scare? What is Pixar trying to promote? Human children are toxic, and anything they touch is toxic. We know this isn't true because of the other movie. But if everyone believes this, how are any of the monsters able to move around these kids' rooms without freaking out? They clearly touch things in the room that the kid has touched. Because we have everything we need to win right here. Heart. Wait, where's Mike's heart? He's 80% mouth. There are so many toxic spiky balls in this race, there's no way any team could possibly navigate it cleanly. Yet, for the most part, this happens. I'm gonna beat you over that finish line. Get ready to eat my dust. Hey. Sully and Mike think that in a team race, it's best they race each other instead. I don't care what universe you're in, if someone found out that the dean of a university was condoning events where the students were being exposed to toxic material, the dean would be forced to resign, and the fraternities involved would most likely be disbanded. Hey, second place ain't bad! I find it totally ridiculous that know-it-all Mike thinks that just because he and Sully crossed the finish line without the rest of the team, they finish the race. The use of illegal protective gel is cause for elimination. I would check the other teams for protective gel also. I'm having trouble believing that only Uzma Kappa members were the only ones that ran into the spiky balls. Also, if you're a frat, why would you cheat when you have the frat that is so obviously bad that they're gonna lose? All you have to do is not come in last. There are no points for first. Oh, a ladybug! For those of you keeping score at home, they have silverback gorillas and normal ladybugs in their universe. The faculty at this school can get away with literally anything. The noise he made was completely out of his control. 
yet it got him physically ejected from the building by being thrown through the roof. Also, this monster remains completely unharmed even after being thrown through the roof of that four-story building and hitting a tree. Is that legal? You better believe it, Mop Top. The only rule is don't get caught. Not getting caught is loosely defined here. I would think that doing something to make the librarian aware of your presence would be getting caught. Since it's important for the parents to not believe there is actually a monster living in the closet, they shouldn't even want them to be made aware of their presence, but that wouldn't allow our team of ragtag monsters to win this challenge, thus ending the movie. This librarian has a very severe case of ADD. The librarian is now making more noise and causing more distracting damage than anyone else in a library ever has. And she's not throwing herself out through the roof. You should have stuck to my strategy. Mike thinks his strategy was working, even though they were on the cusp of losing because of his strategy. The girls from the PNK sorority all look exactly the same when all the other monsters look extremely different from each other. Are they all sisters? Or just extremely selective or perhaps racist? They were able to precisely dump each color on each guy without getting any mixed up or slightly missing. Did that substance that they dumped on them make them all stand in those cutesy embarrassing poses? Or is that Polaroid camera able to change someone's stance? Because they clearly were not standing that way when the picture was taken. Does the school have no law enforcement or disciplinary entity at all? Because I'm sure this would fall in the extreme vandalism category. Hey, uh, where are we? Did no one else know where they were going? They all seem to have just found out where they are. No one thought to ask Mike where they were going this whole walk over? And now Pixar is going to teach your kids that breaking and entering is okay. This is an extremely complex facility that Mike only visited once when he was a small child, yet he knows exactly where to go. One would think that the only company that provides energy for the monster world would have better security. Possibly security at its perimeter, which was easily breached by these college students. It looks like all the security guards were just in the middle of the facility, making it easy for them to break in and to escape. How many times do monsters walk through a kid's door and there are teenagers lurking behind it, doing stupid shit like talking on the phone and rebelling against their parents? This sorority, which has been very skilled up until this point, is arbitrarily thwarted by this Avoid the Teenager Challenge. We only saw three of the PNK girls get trapped, yet suddenly all six of them are in the trapped area of this maze. Randy has an unfair advantage in the Hide and Sneak Challenge, because he can just turn himself invisible. There really is no need for him to even hide in the lamp. Apparently you only get caught in this game if you're just so shitty at hiding it looks like you're not even trying, because everyone knows what Sully looks like, and him lying on the ground like a bear rug should not be a good hiding place, but it did require a small amount of effort. Tomorrow, each of you must prove that you are undeniable scary, and I know for a fact that one of you is not. Just one? I feel like excluding Sully, Mike is the scariest of all the Uzma Kappa members. There's no reason for her to single Mike out when all the rest of them are not scary. If they did the hide and sneak challenge on this field, Mike would clearly have the advantage because he and the grass are the exact same color. They are running to the scare simulators when that clearly isn't necessary because this competition is not a race. This guy's scare, clearly not as good as Sully's where his roar shook the other room, gives him a higher score for some arbitrary reason. I know everyone likes a good underdog, but why is no one suspicious that Mike got a perfect score? Everyone just seemed to accept that Mike was able to beat everyone else's score, including Sully's. No one is suspicious that maybe someone tampered with this machine. Why would you ever have settings like this? A scare is a scare, f***os. Who among these students pursuing a degree benefits from the easy setting? Also, why does the bed have settings for six different scarers, instead of just one uniform setting for everybody? What was I supposed to do? Let the whole team fail because you don't have it? I'm still not with them on the mic has no potential to be scary thing. No one seems to be saying that for any of the other members of Uzma Kappa, but they all seem to have equal scariness to Mike. If the relationship between the monster's world and the human's world is so volatile, why would a student's ID allow Mike to access the lab and operation of a door? Maybe I was just jumpy as a kid, but even if I saw a little green one-eyed thing in the middle of the night, I wouldn't want to approach it, even if it sounded like Billy Crystal. Because you were born a Sullivan! Yeah, I'm a Sullivan. I'm the Sullivan who flunked every test. The humans are hunting you, but let's stand in the open air and yell at each other. Mike's extremely muddy feet are now magically clean. But most of the time, I'm terrified. How come you never told me that before? We weren't friends before. They weren't friends after the exchange at Monster Inc? This question is not Mike's follow-up question. They forgot for a moment that they were being chased by toxic humans. In the human world, it is not standard operating procedure to chase after a bear with nothing but flashlights and righteousness. They're adults. I can't do this. Yes, were they told that adults couldn't be scared by monsters? I know a lot of adults, and most of them would be pooped their pants scared if a sully-like monster came out of nowhere and roared at them. Maybe the monsters should study the energy capabilities of pants pooping. Why the flashlights again? There's probably a light switch inside the cabin. Do Mike or Sully have telekinetic powers? How are they able to get the fan to move and the window to open from the ceiling? Also, a bunch of other things are going to happen that they have no way of actually controlling without some sort of supernatural power. If the canisters can be filled without being attached to the door, is attaching them really necessary? Also, it seems like adult screams are more powerful than kid screams. Why did this moment not teach them that scaring adults is more effective? Heart Scrabble's letting us into the scare program. Heart Scrabble showed no mercy to Mike and Sully, who were able to power a door from the other side, which is apparently something no one has done before but she gives the rest of Uzma Kappa a chance to be in the scare program because they were kind of scary. Come on, Don. There has to be a monster Kinko's for you to make new business cards. It should just be like a regular Kinko's, but with spikes on it. 
You're the scariest bunch of monsters I have ever met. Don't let anyone tell you different. And since they didn't show up in Monsters, Inc., that's the last time Mike and Sully ever saw these friends. Just like real college. A red curb! I wonder how many meetings Pixar had to have about what the parking laws are here in Monster World. Sully was able to run and catch up with the boss that was an impossible distance away from him. Careful, Mr. Sullivan. I was just warming up to you. Does warming up to him include expelling him from school? Monsters, Inc. hires two monsters recently expelled from school. I'll have you know tampering with the mail is a crime punishable by banishment. Lazily tossing in a reason for the abominable snowman's banishment. Monsters, Inc., the only company with internal upward mobility. Spider pig, spider pig, does whatever a spider pig does. You are the lowest form of life on earth. You are not even human fucking beings. You are nothing but unorganized, grabastic pieces of amphibian shit. Silent my precious, my love. The smoother losing his nerve. If Crunchyroll offered sushi and not anime, they would deliver the largest, most diverse selection of professionally subtitled sushi with no ads. And you'd only have to wait one hour to get it fresh from Japan. That's because Crunchyroll is an anime streaming service that offers the largest, most diverse collection of professionally subtitled anime series, and Crunchyroll Premium lets you watch them all in HD with no ads. No! Crunchyroll Premium also gets you new shows as soon as one hour after they air in Japan, with subtitles. The best part, you can enjoy it all free for 30 days when you go to crunchyroll.com slash cinemasins. Yes, that's a month of unlimited professionally subtitled anime, manga, and drama titles that you can enjoy on all your devices. All you have to do is click the link in the description or head to crunchyroll.com slash cinemasins to get started.